Okay, so it's 8.05, so it's time to get started. So even though we have a low attendance at this point, I'm pretty sure that the rest of the, of the group is going to arrive at some point. Um, so the plan or the agenda for today includes the discussion of this topic, um, push and pull production systems. So we are transitioning to uh, talking about different ways of uh, manufacturing devices or items in a manufacturing plant. So there's some uh, different theories about how to manage um, these production schedules. Um, may, the major ones are the ones related to push and pull. So those are the two main things that we are going to be discussing today. And then we are going to introduce a different way of applying, maybe best way to say it is a combination of the two, uh, which is the ConWeb strategy, and we will introduce that concept today in class as well. In addition to that, um, I brought the, the exams with me, so we're going to pass the exams and we're going to discuss uh, the first portion of the exam, section one, since section two is I don't know if you noticed, the problems that were in, in the exam were problems that were in the homework. So if you have questions about the problems, you just have to look at the homework and you have those uh, problems solved and the solution is posted uh, on tracks. Okay, so, um, so in terms of the lecture, um, before we get started, I, I wanted to ask if there's any questions about the lecture that I posted, the video. Uh, hopefully you had time to look at the video, watch the video. And remember that lecture is very important for the second portion of your uh, report for the project, or the second report for the project. So make sure that you understand what you need to do and make sure that you collect the data that you need to perform that second portion because the report is due um, next week. So here's the agenda for today's lecture. If no, there's no questions or any questions at this point. Okay. So the agenda for this lecture, um, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about three different theories in terms of manufacturing or producing items in, in the manufacturing line, and those are referred as push, pull, and conway. So we're going to discuss first. Um, the magic of pool, so what are the advantages of using uh, a pool system when compared to a push system? So when we talk about push system, basically it's that we plan everything beforehand, saying that we need to produce these many items towards the end of the week, so we're going to push as many materials as we need to satisfy that goal. On the other hand, when you, when you look at the pool system, it works the other way around. It will not push all the materials through the line. It will wait until the stations that are toward the end of the system request those materials, and then they will start adding those materials at the end. So we're going to discuss those two theories uh, today. And also, we're going to introduce the concept of a conway, which is a theory that's basically taking advantage of the the benefit of both push and pull systems. And we're going to compare what come with, with MRP, um, or material resource planning, which is essentially uh, a way to do a push system or manufacturing system. And then we're also going to compare come with, with Kanban, which is the system that is applied when you are using a pull system. Okay. And, and that's uh, the goal for today's lecture. So as an introduction, in this lecture, we will provide a formal definition of push and pull system at the conceptual level. So there's a lot of things that you can find online. There's a lot of books have been written on these two subjects. Uh, but for the purpose of this class, we're going to look at the conceptual level. What are the most important things that you need to know uh, from, from these two uh, perspectives? 
So we observed that most real world systems are actually hybrid or mixtures of push and pull systems. So here's a picture that is comparing uh, the two. So in the push, make all we can just in case. In the pull system, make what's needed when it's needed. Okay, so I, since I know that most of you are coming without an industrial engineering background, I decided to use a video that will illustrate the concepts of a push and pull system. And that's what I'm going to be showing you uh, now. So we can continue our discussion uh, for the lecture. Let's look into the details of the pull system production style. This style is based on the orders received. It assembles products only for the amount of order received. Then, it processes the quantity used for assembly, and likewise procure materials for the volume that has been processed. This manufacturing concept which produces the right material at the right time at the right place and in the exact amount, is called the just-in-time. In the pull system production, a tool called Kanban is used to control the production. The Kanban representing the product that has been shipped or parts used is handed from the post process. The Kanban carries all the necessary information for production and logistics such as the part number, pickup cycle, and capacity. The Kanban provides instruction for production. The production line will process parts by using materials to fulfill the instructions indicated on the Kanban. Once the parts have been processed, the Kanban will be attached and handed over to the post process. Now, the Kanban of the materials used for processing will be passed on to the previous process to place in order. In this manner, a pulse system production using the Kanban is called the Kanban production. Now, let's find out the flow of the Kanban production. Products are shipped based on the orders that have been received. The Kanban of products that have been shipped are handed down to the previous process in the welding assembly line. Based on the information on the Kanban, parts required for assembly are picked up from the previous process and assembly is carried out. In the previous processing line, the Kanban of the parts which has just been picked up now becomes an instruction order for processing. In the processing line, materials required for processing are picked up from the storage and then processing is carried out. The Kanban which was attached to the materials will be removed. Based on the information indicated on this Kanban removed, orders will be placed to supply materials. Products that have been welded and assembled are transferred to the shipping area. Materials that have been ordered will be delivered to the factory with the Kanban being attached. In this way, the Kanban is issued from the post process to the previous process in order to pick up the parts required. Instruction for production is provided moving backwards of the processes. When products are shipped following the orders, the Kanban is issued to manufacture products. This means that if no products are shipped, no production instructions will be given. The Kanban enables to achieve the production concept of the right material at the right time at the right place and in the exact amount. In this way, the production speed can follow the sales speed. The main target of production control is to keep the inventory at its minimum by controlling the sales speed and production speed, and not to cause any stockouts. The sales speed depends on customers and competitors, therefore cannot be controlled by ourselves. This is why we have to change the production speed to control the inventory and stockout. However, the sales speed widely fluctuates compared to the production speed, which may create some moments in which the sales speed exceeds the production speed. So, we will have to accumulate the inventory when the sales speed drops. When the sales speed increases and the production speed cannot catch up, we will use the accumulated inventory. Having stock allows you to respond to the fluctuation of the sales speed. In a production schedule, we set the production amount to make sure that the volume of inventory and stockout is equal. The maximum difference of the production speed and sales speed becomes the safety stock. In production control, we consider the safety stock as the standard stock and control the production so that the standard stock is always maintained. A general production style is based on the demand forecast and production schedule. It maintains a certain amount of inventory and products are shipped from the stock every time an order is received. 
In this style, the key factor to minimize the inventory while making sure that there will be no stock at will be the demand forecast. Demand forecast is made by analyzing the demand trend based on the past trends, seasonal factors that repeatedly vary depending on the season, and contingency that affects sudden fluctuations. Based on the demand forecast, the production amount will be planned to make sure that more than a certain amount of stock will be maintained even after receiving the expected number of orders. Based on the production schedule, the most efficient style of material procurement, processing, and assembly will be instructed to manufacture products. Completed products will be placed and stocked in the shipping area. Products will be shipped from the stock once an order has been received. This production style is called the push system production. Now, let's look into the details of the push system production. This is an example of a production line where parts are processed and welded. The production schedule is planned out based on the demand forecast and internal information from customers. Then, plans will be made for the materials, outsourced production, facilities, personnel, production steps, manpower, and schedule. Based on the production schedule, the materials will be procured. Materials are ordered in a large lot in order to keep the purchasing price low. Then, parts are processed using the delivered materials and following the production schedule. Processing lot is kept at a large size so that the frequency of setups will be kept at minimum to achieve an efficient production. Process parts are then carried to the assembly area. Parts are welded and assembled in accordance with the production schedule and are stocked in the shipping area. The standard stock is maintained to prevent any stock out. Just like the processing line, the main target is to achieve an efficient production by minimizing the assembly and setup frequency. Products are shipped from the stock following the orders received. Now, let's sort out the logic of the push system production which will later be compared with the Kanban production. The push system production is a production style that focuses on the logic of the manufacturer's side. The first point is the logic of procuring materials. Materials and parts are ordered at a massive lot volume in order to minimize the purchasing price. The monthly schedule is taken into account so that all the parts needed for the month can be ordered at once. This makes the lot size bigger and gives advantage for the buyer to negotiate the price. The second point is the logic of production. By making the production lot big, the frequency of setups can be reduced, leading to an efficient line operation rate. The facilities and line systems also focus on a big lot size so that maximum efficiency will be realized. The third point is the logic of inventory. The basic idea is to have a large amount of stock to feel secure that there will be no stock out produced. This is an absolute logic which is even called the myth of safety stock. Two factors push manufacturers to keep on increasing their stock. The idea that the stock will definitely be sold one day so there will be no loss in having stock. The other concept is that stock out should never happen because it will directly cause problems to the customers. The Kanban production has a completely opposite idea to this inventory logic. The biggest difference in the two production styles exists here, which makes it hard to understand the Kanban production. The push system production is extremely effective in markets and industries with less fluctuation in which it is easy to predict the demand. Especially in markets and industries with less demand variation, this production system allows higher productivity expectation compared with that of the Kanban production. Now, let's think about the problems of the push system production. The production schedule is usually planned out by balancing the stock amount and the stock out volume, based on the demand forecast. However, if the actual demand results higher than the production schedule, the stock out volume will exceed that of the stock and cause frequent stock outs. On the other hand, if the actual demand is lower than the production schedule, it will increase the inventory as more stock will be created than stock outs. The weak points of the push system production exist in the accuracy and fluctuation of the demand forecast. Because of these weak points, the push system production may cause increased amount of stock or stock outs. To cope with the weak points of the push system production and to eliminate excess stock and stock outs, a company must not simply rely on the demand forecast but also implement a style that is flexible to fluctuations. To achieve this style, the manufacturing speed must follow the sales speed, 
which reflects the actual demand trend. It is a method in which the production amount is changed according to the demand change. By adjusting the manufacturing speed to the sales speed, the difference in the two types of speed becomes smaller while it also minimizes the required safety stock. Okay, so hopefully the video gives you a, a, an idea of the difference between the two systems. And if you need to go over it one more time, again, you can watch the video of the lecture, or I can provide you with the link for this specific video. But as you saw, um, I will say for, for most of the, for both of the theories, or both systems, both of them have their advantages uh, and disadvantages. And they will not work for every system. You're going to have to look at the conditions of your manufacturing line and see the assumptions that are made for pull and push system supply for, for your particular case. But the main, main idea here is that you understand what are the differences in terms of, of the two um, theories. So the key distinction between the push and pull system um, basically, and that's what we're going to discuss now. So, push systems schedule work releases on the basis of information from the outside system. So, like that here. So, push systems schedule work releases on the basis of information from outside the system. While the pool system authorizes releases based on the information from inside the system. Okay, so as you saw, we are making decisions in the push system based on a forecast. So it's based on the external factors, forecast of what we have observed, um, and based on that, we're going to decide what we're going to produce, let's say, next week. However, in the pool system, you're getting the information from inside the system. So, you're looking at the requests from the customers at every time period, and based on those requests, you're saying, okay, we need to make these many items, or we, we need to have these many items running within the, the manufacturing line. Uh, with the goal of the specific uh, request. So, a pool system establish a priority or priority limit on the work in process while a push system does not. Okay, so you will, you will see that the pool system will keep the working process at the minimum because we are trying to minimize the amount of stock that we are having in our manufacturing line. Okay, we want to produce just what we need. We don't want to keep these big piles of materials running in the company. Okay, so... Um, so that's what we are trying to illustrate here in this figure. So, as I mentioned already, the push system will take into account the um, external factors in order to decide how to produce or how to run the production process, whereas the pull system will look at the internal factors in order to decide what should be produced. Okay, so now that we kind of understand the difference between the two, we can talk a little bit more about the magic of pull. Why is this uh, very popular theory in, in the manufacturing um, community? Well, there is a limit on the maximum amount of inventory. in the system. 
So our pool system ensures that no matter what happened on the plant floor, the whip level cannot exceed a prescribed or pre-specified limit. So by establishing this whip cap, the pool system plays a very strong emphasis on the material flow. Okay, so by establishing a whip cap, pool system plays a very strong emphasis on material flows. So what that means is if production stops, meaning if we don't have any customer orders, then the input and the flow of the materials also stop. Okay, so we are only producing when it's required. And how does this translate in terms of the behavior of the manufacturing line? Well, in terms of reducing manufacturing costs, if WIP is capped, the disruption, then disruptions in the line such as machine failures, shutdowns, due to quality problems and slowdowns due to production or to product mix Do not cause a whip to grow beyond a predetermined level. So you remember in our in in analysis, when we are looking at variability, the manufacturing process, if you have a push system and something happens at the end of the line, if you're still producing, that will cause the whip to go up. Because you're still doing your, your process at the beginning of the line, so if you have a stop here, that will continue to run, and you will increase the width before the area in which the stop happens. However, if you if you run a pool system, if something happens, then you are not making any requests from uh, before from the stations that are before the station that where the stop happens. So that will cause the width to stop or to not to grow beyond a specific level. In terms of reducing variability, the key to keeping um, customer service high is a predictable flow through the line. So you know what's going to happen, you know how many items you're going to have at the end of the day, and so on. So a predictable flow In particular, we need to we need a low cycle time variability. So if we know with certainty that it's gonna take us one minute to produce each item, we can predict how many items we can run and produce at the end of the day. But if we have a high variability, that will certainly change our forecast because we don't know if it's going to take two minutes, three minutes, five minutes to, to produce a certain item. So in that sense, it's going to be very difficult for us to predict how many items we're going to have at the end of the day. Okay, so in particular, 
You know already that reducing variability is a very important thing when you are running your manufacturing process. So we needed a low cycle time. And if cycle time variability is low, then we know with a high degree of precision how long it will take a job to get through Okay, so if we have a low variability, we can predict how long is it going to take for the cycle time for this item to go through all the processes that are required, and this will allow us to quote accurate, accurately do dates to customers and to meet those due dates. Okay, so having a pool system will allow you to deduce this variability because again, we, we can pinpoint what are the things that are happening in our system easily when compared to a pool system. We will keep this the whip to a minimum, right, or to a certain limit. Um, and that will allow us to predict the due dates for our uh, deliveries with more accuracy. Okay, so in terms of reducing variability, see how this works. So suppose that we have two machines, and we have a sequence, or a production sequence that goes from machine one, and then we produce these parts, and then they move to the second machine. Okay, so two machines, and machine one fits uh, machine number two. Okay, so machine one is extremely fast, producing parts at a rate of one per second, while machine two is slow producing at a rate of one per hour. So this F means that this is the fast machine, this is S, this is the slow machine. So we know that this machine is going to be producing a lot of items where this one is going to be producing only one at the same time. So there's a major difference between the speed of the two machines. So suppose that we implement a full system, in which we are going to go and use a canvas system in, in, in use, which limits the width between machines to five dots. So, machine one can only produce a maximum of five items, and then wait until this machine requires those items, and then we'll keep the, the, the width at, the, that, at that level uh, for the production system. Because machine one is so fast, this buffer will virtually always be full whenever machine one is run. Okay, so again, it's going to take an hour for this machine to produce one item. So this machine will be producing and will keep this buffer full because this machine is too slow. So, however, suppose that machine one is subject to periodic failures. If a failure lasts longer than five hours, then machine two, the bottleneck, will stop. Why is that? Because machine one will take an hour to produce each item. There's a limit of five, so after five hours, machine two will be able to complete the web that was available. And if that failure on machine one lasts longer than five hours, that means that there's not going to be any units available for machine two to produce. 
Okay, so now depending on the frequency and the duration of the failures of machine one, machine two could be starved at a significant fraction of time despite the tremendous speeds of machine number one. Okay, so that is why reducing variability is also very important, even in pulses. So if you have those failures happening and you are not able to control them, then maybe <clears throat> a web of five will not be sufficient. Maybe you need to increase that web. So in case of a failure happening, you still don't have machine number two to start. Okay? So <clears throat> hopefully that illustrates that point. So reducing variability is important as well. Um, planning the right number of items in your web limit is also important, so you don't want to have a machine starving for a longer period of time. In terms of improving quality, workers from downstream workstations must go to an upstream or station to get parts. Okay, so if the parts are not acceptable in terms of quality, the worker can reject them immediately. So this is another advantage <coughs> of this full system. Since I'm, I, I receive an order, I need to do this many items, so I'll go to an upstream sta uh, station, I will request those items, and I will start working with those items in my station. But if I move to the upstream station and I find out that these items are not of good quality, I can reject them and ask for a different part, in which the items are of better quality. So basically this process allows you to keep a high quality um, process because you're basically expecting the items that you are receiving at each movement that you are due to an upstream station. So the result will be quicker detection <clears throat> of problems and less likelihood of moving and working on that part. Okay, so another um, advantage of full systems is maintaining flexibility. So by preventing release of parts when factory is congested, full system keep orders on paper as long as possible. So, if you notice that your manufacturing line is, is currently congested, something happening, you are not going to push another order through that line. You're going to wait until it is solved, and you will keep that order on paper. Okay? Good day. Engineering and priority scheduling changes. So remember the strategies you use in these cards to know how many items you need to produce, and then you pass to the officer station and you're going to say, okay, I need this many items to do that order. And then once that's completed, the other station will refer to the materials that are needed and so on. So uh, by preventing the release of parts when the factory is congested, then we have more flexibility in terms of saying, oh, maybe we should move to these 
product now or maybe because uh, remember you don't have the orders already to the line you're waiting for a solution to, to to be completed or to a specific order to be completed so having that order on paper waiting for the process to be completed gives you that flexibility on maybe making decisions in terms of priority or changing orders uh, to satisfy the, the customer. Also, releasing work as late as possible will ensure that releases are based on firm customer orders to the greatest extent possible. So that what that means is since you have a little bit more control of when to start the order, if there's a change, is there is a canceling from the customer or any other change in the order, maybe they want more, more parts or maybe they need less parts. By releasing the work as late as possible, then you can address those changes without having a major uh, effect on your production system. So the net effect will be an increased ability to provide responsive uh, customer service. Okay, so I, I'm going to stop here because I need to discuss the exam. Um, and I don't want to start the next stop and leave it halfway through. Okay, so we're going to continue with this topic on Tuesday next week. So let me stop the video.